Of all the flavors in the entire world, which one is considered scientifically the worst? I mean, there has to be one flavor that towers above the rest with regards to how vile it is, right? We know who to call for this one. That's right, our old pal Brainyard. He'll eat anything for science. And that includes eating some of the worst tasting foods out there. So we can get to the bottom of what happens when we taste, how we taste, what makes something taste awful, and of course, what is scientifically considered the worst flavor in the world. Hey, Brainyard, thanks, man. You're really doing us a solid on this one. Just be sure to use some mouthwash after you're done tasting all these foods we're about to serve up because today's about to get pretty gosh darn disgusting. Our sense of taste is a pretty complicated process, but it is absolutely essential for our survival. The reason humans can even taste at all is because in our ancient past, it was an evolutionary advantage to be able to taste something rather than not taste something. Think of it this way. With each generation, every time parents pass on their genes to their offspring, tiny mutations and random variations occur in the DNA. Sometimes this results in traits that can actually help the next generation survive better. And on the flip side, it sometimes could result in a trait that either does nothing or actually makes it more difficult for the next generation to survive. But in the case of tasting, this most likely started way back in our evolutionary past, where a random mutation allowed a new generation to be able to detect whether a food they were ingesting was poisonous or not, based on a quality like, say, bitterness. As you can guess, this was a very advantageous ability. Natural selection, or the process that says organisms with an ability that helps them survive in their environment will pass on those genes to the next generation, would very much come into play here. And thus, the ability to taste something and know if it was good to eat or not was passed on, and on, and on, and on, and remains a trait that we currently have today. So, here's the short version. Something that was sour most likely was bad for us. Something that was sweet was most likely good. And that's why we taste. But how do we do this? Oh man, this is where things get a little complicated. Our tongues are lined with taste papillae, or those little bumpy dudes that you can feel on the top of your tongue. These taste papillae are in turn made up of your taste buds, of which we have about 10,000 of on our tongues, which are themselves made up of about 50 gustatory receptor cells. Every gustatory receptor has a small gustatory hair, which is a tiny spindle-like structure. This is what will come in contact with the molecules that enter your mouth, like food. And when that happens, the sensation of taste starts. An electrical impulse is sent to the gustatory area of our cerebral cortex in our brains. This, Brainyard, is how we know what we are tasting, from sweet to sour to salty to bitter to savory. These are the five types of tastes out there. And through the mixing and matching of these five tastes, our brains let us know if what we are eating is good for us or not. But hold on! Taste is one thing. But what about something's flavor? Believe it or not, there is actually a difference between flavor and taste. Flavor is a mix of many different senses. Not only is taste taken into account, but smell, temperature, and texture are all mixed together to result in what we think of as a flavor. Don't believe us? Well, ever try to drink wine out of something other than a wine glass? You may have thought, hmm, this doesn't really taste the same. And you'd be right. The shape of a wine glass is ideal for allowing the smell of the wine to hit your nose, and also the speed at which the wine will enter your mouth. These seemingly not related aspects of drinking a glass of wine are exactly what make the experience what it is. So yes, drinking wine out of just your normal, average, everyday glass is going to affect its flavor. Who'd have thought? Here's a simple experiment you can do at home to test how different senses affect flavor. The next time you're about to take a big bite of your delicious dinner, try holding your nose before as well as during your next bite. You'll find it much harder to sense the flavor of what you are eating. Again, this is because our sense of smell is tied directly with our sense of taste to assess flavor. And when we chew our food, tiny molecules travel up to our nose and help our brains make that fully formed decision on whether something is flavorful or on an evolutionary level, if something is safe and nutritious to eat or if it's something you should just spit out. Another simple experiment you could try? Try eating blindfolded and see how this affects your sense of taste. 
So, now we know how we taste, and we know all the things that are taken into account when deducing a food's flavor. So, let's get down to it. What's the worst flavor? Ever. As in, ever, ever. In the history of the world. Can science deduce what is the absolute nastiest, most nausea-inducing, disgustingly bitter flavor ever? Brainiard, thanks again for volunteering, because we have a few contenders for you. Let's first serve you up what Anthony Bourdain once called unspeakably nasty. We are talking about the Icelandic delicacy, fermented shark, also known as haukat. Here's the thing though, Anthony Bourdain was absolutely a food expert, but his assessment of this food is still his opinion. Another food expert and editor, Ragnar Edelson, later commented on Bourdain's reaction and said, Celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain famously called Haukal the worst thing he had ever eaten. This may have been colored by an overall miserable visit to Iceland, or by the fact that Anthony Bourdain is a huge sissy. Hey, we aren't here to pass judgment. One person's disgusting shark meal is another person's rare and delicious delicacy. Brainyard, we'll leave this one up to you and your own personal taste, but we still want to get to the bottom of this. Is there a scientifically proven flavor that is so vile it could be dubbed the worst flavor in the world? Oh, make sure you keep some water nearby, Brainyard, because we very well may have the contender. Drum roll, please. We'd like to introduce you to the chemical known as denatonium benzoate, which more commonly goes by the name Bitrex. This chemical was discovered kind of by accident. In 1958, scientists at a pharmaceutical research company called McFarland Smith were doing routine work on anesthetics when they realized that when in powdered form, denatonium benzoate was extremely bitter. And we're talking extremely bitter. Just how bitter, you ask? Hmm, maybe this will put it into perspective. Take one teaspoon of Bitrix and drop it into an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Remember, that's over 660,000 gallons of water, and you would still be able to taste it. It's incredibly, ridiculously, surprisingly, and apparently unavoidably bitter. Ready to sprinkle a little on your pasta brainyard? Or how about we use it instead of sugar for your coffee? Wow, you really are a trooper. And, yep, your face says it all. That's exactly the reaction we were expecting. So, this substance tastes incredibly nasty, which, on the surface, may make it seem like its discovery was also completely useless. However, the thing about Bitrex is, it's also completely odorless, colorless, and harmless. You heard that right, Brainyard. Contrary to what your taste buds are telling you, this substance is absolutely safe to eat. Ah, uh, sure, you may think the next logical step is to buy a big bagful and sprinkle it on your sibling's dinner as a prank, but scientists found a much better use for it, as a deterrent for common household cleaners that could potentially be poisonous. Hey, when life gives you incredibly sour lemons, make, well, something else really, really, really bitter with them. And that's exactly what Bitrix is used for today. By adding it to potentially harmful liquids that are kept in our homes, we are protecting kids and toddlers who are being maybe a little too curious and would maybe decide to take a big swig of that detergent. But here's the thing, adding Bitrix actually works quite well. By making these potentially harmful cleaners and household products taste absolutely terrible, there's a good chance that if someone started to drink it, they would spit it right out. Looks like being the worst tasting substance in the world also makes you the best line of defense against accidentally ingesting something poisonous. A few common products that contain this super bitter chemical are disinfectants, toilet cleaner, fabric conditioner, hard surface cleaner, air fresheners, laundry detergent capsules, and potpourri oil. Ah, because it's added in, we're all a little safer. Well done, Bitrix. Well done. As you can imagine, leave it to the internet to find out about a chemical like Bitrix and make, well, a Bitrix challenge. If you want to see how people react to Bitrix but aren't ready to try it yourself, and hey, we really don't blame you, then be sure to search Bitrix Taste Test to see exactly what people think of the bitterest substance in the world. Well, there you have it, Brainyard. You buckle down, face the elements, and tried a bit of this Bitrix stuff. And of course, you live to tell the tale.
After all, it's not poisonous. It's just absolutely disgusting. But hey, leave it to scientists to put it to good use. A few grams of Bitrix in something like home cleaning solutions or detergents will make anyone who decides to try them spit them right out. And good thing too, considering most of these products are very poisonous. In the meantime, if you're really craving sour, we say stick to lemons, limes, and grapefruits, Brainyard. They're healthy, delicious, and packed with vitamin C. You'll get all the sour and some healthy bonuses too.